Hello, my name is name tags, if you'd like. <laughs> I kind of have a feeling with these folks it's not necessary. Um, let, let me go ahead and introduce our panelists. Of course, um, over here on my far right is uh, James Marster. <laughs> Next, we have Michelle Trachtenberg. Nicholas Brendan. <laughs> Don't look back. Um, I'm sorry, Allison Hannigan. <laughs> Creator, Joss Whedon. Executive producer Marty Noxon. And Baby. <laughs> Director of Photography Raymond Stella. <laughs> and production designer Carrie Meyer. <laughs> We us were chatting before you came out about the musical episode. Um, yeah, and so I thought that would be the first thing I would ask you about, Joss. What, what were the origins of that episode, and how did you know that you had a cast that was up for that? Allie begged me. And begged me. <laughs> she said, when, when, when can I sing? Nope. Um, <laughs> Um, it sort of started in a roundabout way with uh, James, actually, uh, who, um, when, we, <laughs> when we were making uh, Fool for Love, his episode, we, uh, uh, he mentioned that it was like being in rep, doing all these different parts when he was playing Spike in his many guises from the past, and that made me think about that we should start doing some play readings, um, which we do at my house sometimes with some of the cast. Um, at the first play readings, everybody was so terrified that we got a little drunk, <laughs> and, um, uh, and look what happened. Yeah, we said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marty, prove it, all right? Prove it. Um, <laughs> nothing I say could be that interesting. Um, anyway, uh, not quite that drunk. Um, no, not that. Oh, God. <laughs> That's, that's coming back to haunt me. That's bad. Um, just uh, just um, uh, you know, comfortable enough to sit around the piano uh, singing, those of us who never had. And, um, and that's when I started to realize how many great singers I had. Uh, James suddenly seemed to have his guitar all the time. <laughs> um, and uh, at the drop of a hat, or actually even with no hat, um, he would play, uh, is, and he's written amazing songs. Tony, of course, has been singing for years. That's what started. We all wanted to hear Tony sing. And, and Joss didn't even know you could write songs at first. Well, not, you, I, did, you said you sucked. I was, uh, no, I, I thought I was brilliant. <laughs> and, then he would, and then he would come out with like a song that would like lay waste to everyone. And it was like, I'm not crying, I'm not crying. <laughs> Every time. Um, drunk. And um, uh, um, anyway, I always, you know, from the very first episode, I wanted to make a musical more than anything in the world. And finally I realized I had a cast who could handle it. And I actually had a couple months off. So um, 
Uh, like I said, it's a, a long story, but that's why. Because I realized I was going to get one opportunity. That I'd never make another show that would lend itself to that. I'd never have a cast that was this talented on so many levels. And there was stuff I didn't even know about yet. And um, about how good they could be and how hard they could work. Uh, they didn't know how hard they could work either. <laughs> They're a little pissed. Um, and um, uh, so I finally sat down and uh, conquered the fact that I can't actually play the piano and, and, and wrote it. And then they all had to do it. Because <laughs> I'm their boss. Who surprised you the most? Who, um, who had the un, undiscovered musical talent that, that you discovered? Um, you know, I would have to say the biggest surprise for me uh, was Emma because uh, Emma had never come to the house, and what a voice, and what a dancer, and plus I knew she was funny and all that stuff, but that was really, that was really a, 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 just a shock. She's yeah, clearly... She yeah. <laughs> Make no mistake though, we were all terrified. None, like from the actor's standpoint, we didn't know we could do that. You know, I mean, we were terrified. A lot of, I mean, <laughs> no, please, we don't really want to do that. We didn't sign up to be a musical actor in front of six million people. Else. Well, and not to mention that we, we got a, a little CD of Joss playing the piano and his wife Kai singing, and she has an incredible voice, and she was singing all the female parts. It's like, well, I can't do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just get Kai to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of like saying you show up, anybody, whatever your job is, your job the next day is juggling. Okay. No, um, okay. Oh, ah. that's, yeah. I said not to give anything for season seven away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem for the actors is what are you going to do with this this year? Because you keep doing weirder stuff every time. It's gonna Dullness. <laughs> we haven't explored it, but I think it's cool. <laughs> We're going to have to do everything backwards or something. Nicholas, did you enjoy the singing and dancing? Uh. Would you like to, Come on, would you like to do some I think he's, for us? I think Nick has a little number prepared for us. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, um, actually I do have some prepared. All right, but, there you go. <laughs> uh, no, in all honesty, um, uh, it changed my life a little bit because I, uh, uh, I started acting when I was 25, so I didn't do any theater or any musical theater when I was growing up. Um, I was an athlete, and then I was a bum for about four years, you know? Waiter. That's, well, which is a bum. Yeah, okay. Or, and if you're not, that's what people see you. Okay. You're a bum. And um, so when I went into this, uh, to this musical, I, I wasn't terrified. I just, it was, I started acting because, I mean, I was, I went into acting, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I booked the show. So my thing was, when Josh said, we're doing a musical, I'm like, all right, cool. I've got nothing to prove. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. Whatever I do is better than what I haven't done. You know? And um, my wife, Tressa, it was funny when we were doing this episode. Sometimes when you've got to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, it's, it, you know, that alarm goes off. It's a hard, it's a hard wake up. You know? It's like, ah, Christian. And then, and then you snooze for a while. And all of a sudden, you're late for work. You know? So you take a fast shower. No, that's just you, Nick. <laughs> but I fixed that. Snoozes for three hours. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but with this episode, I was like, I just like bounced out of bed and it was, um, I, I love going to, to the, to the studio and, and singing. Um, I realized that really I wasn't a singer because I can sing for two hours and then my voice went away, which is why we had two sessions. And then working on, on the dancing and then having it all come together, I just had the best time of my life and, and, uh, it was just a blast. So yeah, I had fun, a lot of fun. Allison? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Would you like to sing? Hey, lady. You, you know, I um, <coughs> constantly threatened laryngitis <laughs> and, uh, and never wanted to be, I just, no. Um, <laughs> so I have very, very little singing in the musical, but once I found out the magics of Technology? <laughs> wow, I would have been. Give me a solo, we, Joss. <laughs> we, we didn't use any of those things. Right. Oh yeah. Sorry. I would have been a little more confident, I think. But um, but yeah. And how about you, Michelle? Yes, that was my next question. Very good. You were enthusiastic at first, as I recall. Oh, who was the first word that came to my head? Um, singing makes me very very nervous. But um, it was it was all it's all your fault. Um. I love dancing, and that was that was my thing. I requested very little singing and a whole lot of dancing, and you actually choreographed. Joss did the whole thing. He showed me the 
loops and the jumps and the flips. And he was wearing the same costume, which was kind of <laughs> odd. It was very odd, but, you know, I was They're worried it wouldn't slimming, look good on me. Okay. <laughs> but um, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun afterwards. Allison threatened laryngitis, and I actually had it. So uh, I, had, I had psychosomatic tonsillitis. I was so petrified. The thing was, everybody had a different reaction when I first told them. And it really did run the gamut from extreme joy to large hatred. And, uh, and, and you know, fear in and between. And some in between. There was some, <laughs> some joyful hatred. And, um, no, just fear. And, uh, but because I knew who loved to sing, who was afraid to sing, who had what, I had everybody's range. I knew that Michelle wanted to dance. We broke the story around everybody's particular wants and talents so that I knew Amber sings a ballad. She's a ballad singer. Same with Tony. James is going to sing some rock and roll because he's James. And he's Spike, too. So it worked out pretty well. And, um, once we'd recorded everything, which was a difficult, arduous, and endless process, and dance rehearsals, and all the things, all the while shooting the show. So when I stress how hard everybody worked, uh, I'm not kidding, I've never seen anybody, any television crew or cast work that hard, ever. Um, once we got there, and into it, everybody just shown. I mean, there is like, you know, every single one of them, because I've watched that thing more times than anybody. Um, <laughs> because I'm an incredible narcissist. And um, uh, it's just extraordinary to me to see, and it was on set every day, everybody just glowing like they lived in a musical. Nobody came to work and said, oh, I'm nervous, I have to dance. They all came to work and said, this is what my life is now. I sing and dance. And it was like bungee jumping. Yeah. And our crew it's sang, exhilarating. too. They were yes. so sweet. They'd just hum along. Yeah. Well, every day was a different songs. song, and by the end, everybody was sick of it and humming it. <laughs> Jess so. kept yelling at me because while I was dancing, I was singing the lyrics, and uh, it was just not good because I didn't have to know the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> it was well. supposed to be magic. <laughs> no magic. I knew them. Carrie, what, what were some of the challenges in, in, in uh, creating sets that could be used? Pretty much we all well, shot the entire show on existing sets, except for some locations, which we had to go find. Those and sets building rock. the big staircase for the tap dancing. A big staircase for the tap dancing. Come on, that's a thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was the one thing we added to a set, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned to me back there that you've created, is it... 200 sets at least for, for Buffy since you've, since in the six years? I mean, that was just a guess, but yeah, I think we've, you know, I mean, we average like, you know, I, you know, I can't even say, at least 200 sets we've built for over seven, six years. Is, is there one that you're particularly proud of that's your, your favorite set that you've built, created? Uh, um, I, I, I guess probably, uh, the, the, the mansion, the vampire mansion from uh, second season. That's uh, very cool. Yeah, the, you know, the second half of second season. Oh, come on. I like the, the meat packing of the first half of the second. The meat packing, <laughs> Spike and yeah. Um, was, I like the one, the the one that was uh, the church and the library and Adam's Lair and like 14,000. Well, yeah, we, I mean, we, then you used it for the Okay, sewer. we built 200 sets, but you know, <laughs> we would take like one set and make yeah. it into 15 different sets. So, you know, if, you, if you're an avid watcher of the, of the show, you'll notice, you know, it's you'll one see classroom. one set 15 different times, redressed and repainted it's, and It's just rebuilt. a different filter, and that's where Ray comes in. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Seriously, though, when it, when it comes out on DVD, a lot of people are going to appreciate the sets that you make because they're, they're so detailed. They're really on par with a feature where a feature has to be believable when it's blown up to this size, which means that it all has to look real w when you're walking through it. And a lot of times a TV set doesn't look that real because it doesn't have to. It's so small and so fuzzy. But your stuff, I swear to God, even going down the back alley, everything that's just brand new, it's just so heavily textured. The other thing about the, the infamous musical was that a lot of the things I saw for the first time, partially because it does look different than any episode we've ever done, just, and, and this is actually about young Ray here, it's not just all with filters, but I've, you know, to be doing the show, um, you know, the person who's on set every single minute of every single working day is the DP. And, um, Ray here, um, you know, in the middle of making a show that already has a very stylized and difficult look to make the musical, which looks unlike any episode we've done, but still looks like the show. Really, it, the way it showed off the actors and the sets, like, I wrote not just to their talents, but to the sets. I wrote uh, Nikki and Emma's song as a kind of 
30s pastiche because of the look of that set being so deco and sort of also the way her costumes had been the year before. So that's why they got that particular number and the way it's lit and the way it looks, um, it makes a huge impression. It's gorgeous. Uh, there, there was a, the musical episode which we've been talking about, and, but then later this season, and that was very you know fun obviously, but the show took a very kind of a dark turn. Um, I mean, you know, don't you think so? People, people oh, said that. That was funny. <laughs> what? Don't look at me like this that. This is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> um, ex explain more. Dark and... Seriously, Marty and, and Joss, I mean, did, did, a lot of people kind of complained. They thought it had taken too dark of a turn. I mean, how, how do you guys respond to that? Oops. <laughs> With the mic. With, with the mic. Okay, I'll talk into the mic. Um, <laughs> you probably could. He was saying, I liked it, mommy. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it, it was so much a response to um, the, the relationship that Buffy found herself in with Spike really drove, from, to my mind, so much of the second half of the season and then, of course, the turn with Willow. And I don't know if we ever stopped to think that these storylines would <laughs> be going on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we did have a mission statement, which was like, they get out in the world, and it's really hard. Um, I don't think we understood exactly how disturbing we were going to get. And, um, uh, but that was sort of the idea. It was, it was to give them, get them to a really dark place, and particularly towards the end, Willow's character. But um, that's partially because there were things we wanted to explore that really were dark. Um, and partially because um, it's nice to be able to give that to your actors, even though occasionally you can depress them to death. Um, you know, to be able to, I mean, I mean, come on, how about Dark Willow? She was so cool. <laughs> Why know, did I have to be so veiny? Yeah. <laughs> When, well, I wanted to go with acne. It was, uh, you know. when, That's a when, kind of a perfect thing. I mean, um, we, Buffy grows up, and so does everybody around her. And they, as everyone knows, you move out of mom's house and things get weird. You know? <laughs> so uh, the issues, I think that, that it was very wise to let Buffy graduate high school and become a young adult. And it would be silly to try to keep the issues, uh, first love, first kiss, boyfriend gets mean on you. It has to develop if it's going to be organic and be true to someone growing up. Which doesn't and necessarily mean that it always has to be as dark as it was this year. I mean, we had to sort of buy back the fact that Buffy had gone, had been dead and had been in heaven and that her experience on earth was going to be um, a real journey and a real struggle. But we definitely do aspire to, you know, make things a little less grim next season on <laughs> UPN. <laughs> Some of our characters don't want to die. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, uh, when did you know that Willow was going to try to destroy the world? <laughs> um, oh gosh, well, when I was sitting at home watching it, going, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> she can't By create the ninth new memories. Month, we're just like, oh, I can't see it. Okay, what are my lines? Or, no. Um, I, uh, yeah, it was... I've got black hair, why? <laughs> what happened? I had little, um, little just hints, I guess, but... Um... Black hair being one of them. <laughs> yeah. And but then I, the contacts yeah, was, my makeup was the main hint. When my makeup call became like an hour earlier. I was like, wait a minute, what is this about? <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I just sort of got the scripts and figured out that, oh, dear, it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had long talks about this. I, I found out a lot through too. my boyfriend. Yes. You talked to my boyfriend more than you did. I like, found out through him that I was going to like go all of you. I knew the black, the book-sucking thing. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> I knew, Who hasn't I knew, sucked like, a book from time to time, <laughs> huh? I knew how my hair was going to get black and why. <laughs> but, um, but I didn't know about the whole... Playing? Yeah. <laughs> Oopsie. The fling was cool. <laughs> yeah, man, I know a lot of chicks who were into that, actually. They like roaring for you. Do it again! I, it was great. Sorry. I was eating Chinese food. 
when I saw that. <laughs> you know, I, haven't seen I stopped that. eating Chinese food after I saw that. <laughs> I just saw it in person. I haven't seen it, on, but I, it was gooey. <laughs> and and Nicholas, you saved the world at the <laughs> end. Yeah. I gotta tell you, you know, not my first time. <laughs> And right now I'm in talks with, uh, with Sharon. <laughs> it's weird, no, once you do it, I, I mean, these people think it's real, you know? I'm going to see Putin in Russia in a week. My book is filled right now, at least until we go back to work. I, you know, I'm gonna do some good work, people, okay? You're, you are gonna- The war is over, so says Nick Brendan. You're, there's a lot of people that you need to remind about your preschool experience together. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, he'll tell and, Arafat and, and, about and, his crayon. And actually, and actually, yeah. And the great part about that that whole little, I mean, monologue, cap monologue, whatever, was was the fact. And this and this is going to be a, a, a stroke on, on Joss Whedon in, in, in a very heterosexual way. <laughs> is that the fact that? Um, because when it was first written, that yellow crayon, the, the, the crayon thing wasn't in there. And then I got the second script, and um, having that, that crayon thing in there, just talking about, you know, like, connecting on all these levels, was just, as an actor, fan just fantastic, because after I read it, I cried. And if I'm crying reading it for the first time, you know, and then I have time to work with it, when, when it affects an actor that way, and thank you very much for, for doing that, when you see it as the character, stop. <laughs> um, that's called talent, and that's called texture, and, 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 and any actor, like anyone who's, who's lucky to have what I have, and I am very lucky to be here right now, and then also to be saying the words and, and, and have someone like Joss Whedon in my life and having lines like that to say, um, it makes it a lot easier on you, and it was just, um, I mean, my whole, if I can, in a nutshell, Breakdown last season, I'm gonna say yellow crayon, yellow crayon, because that's what it was. Yeah, and it was awesome. Meanwhile, I went on the internet and someone was like, uh, you had a yellow crayon? That's how he stopped her? This show sucks! <laughs> and I was all like, that's true! And your yellow was my blue! I'm a hack, I suppose. What do you know? Well, I think, um, you know, our writers, Marty and, and Joss, are really wonderful in that sense. They, they kind of, like Joss was saying about the musical, he catered it to each one of our individual, you know, needs and, and, and talents. Um, our writers are really listening to us. Um, they don't just write out of, you know, whatever they come up with, whatever they've dreamt. Well, they really, sometimes. <laughs> we don't like to talk about those episodes. Um, but it's, it's really amazing. I mean, I know I feel very comfortable. Um, and, and there's just what, what James was saying about character progression and, and the darkness and everything. I think it's vital for each character to go through um, a dark period in their life because that's what we go through in life. And for a show not to you know, or present that and express that is absolutely ludicrous because then it's not life. And I think Buffy's goal, it's, it's a metaphor. Yeah. You know, I've, I was such a, a huge fan of the show before I joined and I read many of Joss's interviews and I was really amazed to find out, um, not, not amazed to find out, but I'm um, so interested to find out how the show was structured. It was, um, it was awesome and we're all really, really lucky. But the truth is, anything we write for you guys, you can do. <laughs> and, and in fact... Yeah, I mean, there's that. <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but it's got to start somewhere. We're just being modest. <laughs> yeah, really. okay. Oh, forget it then. <laughs> they make up their own lines. They don't even care about us. They just make... <laughs> If we were on another show, we would know what was going to happen season to season pretty much. Someone Let's was going to get their heart broken, someone was going to kiss somebody. You can turn us into snails, man. <laughs> we turned Sarah into Buffy's a rat. Buffy's a rat, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're very nice. She was <laughs> right. At the very end, wasn't Spike trying to get the chip out of his head? No. <laughs> but you were meant to believe that he was. Okay, all right. This is a thing that I personally have devised called a plot twist. <laughs> I think it's going to catch on with the young people. Which actually, Joss bought the rights too, so whenever there's a plot twist, he gets paid. <laughs> it was surprising. It was good. Yeah. It was a good twist. Well, it, uh, it will pay off. <laughs> Does... No, no. <laughs> I'm not crazy. The show's not over yet, correct? What? The show's not done yet. So 
there are, we don't the, have any scripts. So there's there's a plot twist for, for a reason. Season, it's you know it's not a movie. Everything's not done. So. But um, we do have next year figured out, and this is the part where I get to not say anything about it. Right. But um, <laughs> always fun for everyone. But um, we're actually really excited <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> But, but Spike will, will have a soul. Yes, and that always works out really soul. well, and it's very simple. <laughs> yes. And is, is, is this going to be a, like a, an angel kind of thing where he's not going to be able to have sex anymore? <laughs> it's all she can oh talk about. And again, a timeout for you. It's bad all idea. sex, sex, bad, sex, bad sex. idea. <laughs> I think it'd be I bad think to our show angel. clearly comes down at Kent's sex before marriage. <laughs> and so, um, no, it's, you know, if it's like an angel thing, that will be embarrassing because we have an angel thing going on on another network. Um, yes, that I'm, was the other thing you invented, originality, right? Yeah, the Along with spin the off twist. is gotcha. also okay. again, right. again for me. Um, but no, hopefully it will be very different uh, from Angel. Obviously, there, there's some similar things that are going to happen, but oh my God, uh, it's not going to be anything that uh, Spike has ever gone through, and if we're lucky, it's not going to be anything James has ever had to portray because it's fun to challenge him. James is the one who, when I did the musical, said, well, let's face it, if we're not getting this shit scared out of us once a year, we're not working hard enough. <laughs> Which is, that's sex. the blessing of the show, by the oh. way. <laughs> After five years, most actors are bored to tears. Yeah. You know, we're terrified. It's a blessing. <laughs> okay, but let's talk about the sex. Um. <laughs> or let's talk about snails. Which one do you want to talk about? Speaking about yeah. being terrified, let's talk about, about sex. sex. There you go. <laughs> There's a, just a lot of sex, and um, I, I'm just logistically. How did how did you guys work that out? I mean, well, uh, I'll know, let you guys. When take a man this loves one. a woman. Logistically, how did we work it out? Logistically, I was in a sock, and Sarah was fully clothed again. This is what I want to know. There you go. Did you guys notice that all of our sexy scenes? Sarah can just like every day sit back and giggle at James and his little sock. <laughs> Big sock. Damn. It was um, a naughty year for us, and, and, um, and that was deliberate also. Partially because, yes, they're getting older, partially because her relationship with Angel was all about romance, and her relationship with Spike was not. And there are two very different, passionate, intense kind of relationships, and we had done the one and wanted to do the other. And, um, and as you get older, you can get into relationships that are truly unhealthy. And, um, but at the same time, there's also the fact that um, you know, we had played metaphor for five years and... Um, we event. ran out of ideas. <laughs> we weren't going to say it. Marty got hers. So we all got drunk, Marty got pregnant, there are more ideas now. Well, you know, it, it, uh, eventually you sort of have to like, put your cards on the table a little bit. Even though we still played Metaphor, it was like, when Buffy and Spike first had sex, my first comment was, Au revoir, Monsieur Metaphor. It was so graphic. But at the same time, they were in a metaphor. They were in a falling down house, which was very, very clearly, um, you know, what Buffy's life was, ha what was happening in her life then was just, she was losing herself. So on the one hand, and the same thing with Willow and Tara for a long time, when we started, it was a metaphor, it was spells, it was magic, and then we wanted to come out and say, okay, eventually we're just being too coy about this. We're losing the reality of it if we don't just say it. And they, you know, they became girlfriends, truly, and became physical with each other. At the same time, we still could play the metaphor, we could play it about magic. But there is a point at which you sort of, you know, part of the process of doing a show for six years and part of the process of growing up means um, you say goodbye to some of these more essential metaphors. You lose some of them uh, in a period of your life when you're growing up. Um, life suddenly isn't this great battle. It's this tiny, mundane, very real thing. And so necessity and, I think, trying to be true to the process of growing up is what caused us to become more graphic and more physical and more literal while still trying to tell the metaphor metaphorical stories that, you know, the show is based on. Plus, we like porny. Plus, we dig the porny. 
No. It's just joking. Well, how sophisticated is the audience going to be? How, I mean, can we redeem Willow? Every, that's I love it. Can we redeem Willow? Of course we can. <laughs> we're very good. Just, but it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be really interesting, and it's going to take a, probably a lot of time, you know? And it's going to be a one great fancy ride. speech. We're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not, we're not in the days when everybody has to be peachy keen and perfect all the time. You know, by 53 minutes, everything's got to be perfect again. That, we don't do that anymore. And, and we don't do that in spades around here. You know? <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I think it's interesting, too, because we've gotten a lot of mail this year about sort of um, people longing for sort of the romanticism of Angel and Buffy and um, kind of a return to innocence. And, um, and uh, this year definitely was about a kind of a loss of innocence. I mean, Buffy really lost a lot when she died and came back and when her mother died. And, um, and her you know, need to go to Spike had so much to do with just making herself feel. And we definitely pushed it in terms of what, you know, it wasn't metaphoric, the sex they were having, but what it was doing to them was, was sort of metaphoric, I thought. Um, and I think rediscovering innocence as you get older is another thing. So, you know, again, it's, it doesn't always have to be grim, but, but this year really had a, a certain kind of loss to it until the very end when then, you know, I think we, you know, we did make a very conscious effort to say this is what's been lost and now she's finding it again through Dawn. What's really cool, though, is we're sitting here talking about all the main characters that have been with us the whole time and what's going on with them. We are not talking about the super monster this year. You know, this is not a show that's devolved into a new cool monster every year. This is, this is a show that's used the monsters as kind of window dressing and metaphor to explore, explore the people. And I think that that's, that's why it's sustained and become interesting to the point of being dangerous last year. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yes, yeah, uh, that's right. It wasn't too depressing, it was too interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a little above everybody's heads. <laughs> Maybe I'm a great artist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spinning, man. Work with me. Um, no, uh, but I agree with you. I just wanted to talk about me. That's um, my point. I did. But uh, I also do want to give just a slight shout out to I think the extremely underappreciated great evil menace of the evil trio. The I think they're the best villains we've ever had. <laughs> they, so awesome. they just make me laugh all the time. And if, you know, everybody ever asks, what characters are really drawn from the writers? Um, we'll lie. <laughs> we'll say anybody. But the fact is, most of the conversations they had on the show, we were having in the room when we were like, oh, we better get back to writing. So what can the villains talk about? So I have a, they have a special place for us writers. Speaking of the evil guys, uh, and then Warren dies this horrible, excruciating death at, at the end. I mean, I, <laughs> will, will there be uh, consequences for, for Willow for killing a human? No, I don't think we need to address it. Nah. That. that would seem depressing and weird. <laughs> um, We're trying to be light. <laughs> hey, I, sa I saved the world. <laughs> yeah. I saved the world. No carpenter. <laughs> You'll just see Willow drawing with a yellow crayon. <laughs> That's it. Willow um, draws a yellow crayon and I saved it. the world. There are, <laughs> there are consequences for everything. Um, you know, again, not to the point where she'll spend all year going, I wish I was dead. Why? 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 But even they're watching Gilmore, what? Um, but. Uh, um, but yeah, we'll definitely deal with it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we don't let people get away with things unless there's a reason. Tony got away with it last year, um, the year before rather. Right. He killed a person. That's um, right. And uh, nobody ever, but nobody ever found out. But he's in jail now. <gasps> That's <laughs> where he went. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, I didn't mean on TV, I meant in real life. It wasn't real, I swear. I'm in jail. What, what a... That was that funny, was cool. by the way. Will he be back? Um, I'm actually hoping that we're going to see a good deal more of Tony this year uh, than last year. You know, I, I do believe in what we did last year, but I also believe that, you know, it was uh, with the feeling of loss uh, was greater than even I realized because at the beginning of the year, we knew he was going to come back at the end of episode 21. And it's still the first time I saw the footage, I was just blown away by like what a gap he filled, what an incredible presence he has, how much he brings to the show.
Did, does he have a, is there a show or on the BBC? With there, you? There's, actually he has been doing a show on the BBC, but not the one uh, that, uh, that we're developing. Uh, but we are developing something for that character for the BBC. It's just, it's taking a little time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel sometimes that you're spread too thin or are you able to juggle all these balls at once? Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, both always, and I felt it in the first year of Buffy. As I have more work, um, I have more people like Marty Knoxon in my life that uh, I can, you know, I can leave to mind the store complete and with complete confidence. And you know, we have an incredible writing staff, you know, and an incredible crew, and you know, and these bums over here, and people, you know, with whom I trust my artistic life, and that's what makes the difference. That, and you know, I'm a little more focused than I was in the first year because you just you, you have no choice. Uh, there's not one of the shows that's going to say, "Hey, you know what? This week you don't have to do an app. You're tired. It's okay. It can suck." Um, you know, you just you you find it. You find the time. And, I don't uh, think there's ever been an episode of Buffy that sucked, but... Oh. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Again, I love you. <laughs> so, Lesnick, Mona Shell, Nikki good. James. Yeah. Good. Lesnick, Lesnick, Lesnick. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll deal. You know, that happened, I'll deal with it. Michelle, okay. Michelle Dawn um, had some some serious butt kicking to do at the, at the end of the season. Is she, is she gonna, is she mature? What's going on with her? Is she gonna grow up? You said, you mentioned that she's gonna get to wear black next next year? Well, you know, this is my promise and I have, I have witnesses. Um, <laughs> Jaws has promised me that Dawn can wear heels and actual black in her wardrobe because um, it's just time. I've been wearing sneakers for the past two years and that's really not so fun anymore. You don't need heels. <laughs> six, six, one. Yes, I am the taller of, of the girls, but um, I'm, I'm, look, I'm hoping for more ass kicking. It's, it's fun, man. Especially and, uh, in heels. In heels, <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait um, till 6 a.m. on a Friday night, man. That's true, but um, it's, you know, this past year has kind of been, um, and Joss and I and Marty have talked about this, this is Dawn's kind of a look at me, look at me, I need some attention here. And um, that's gone, that's over with, she's over that, right? No whining. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> oh dear. But um, this, uh, this coming year, you know, Dawn has had these past years with, with everyone around her, um, influencing her so much from, you know, uh, Evil Willow and, and you know, Soli Spike. Um, to Clint, can we get like a little <laughs> applause for that guy, Clint? Well, so Come on. That guy's adorable. So Good cute. job. It's awesome. Very He's really great. More scenes with Clint. But um, I just, this is what I was saying about the whole life thing. Characters need to progress. And, you know, if, if we were all pigeonholed in, in the same thing, it, it wouldn't be fun. So um, whether that's ass kicking or heels, it'll just be a, a character development heels. <clears throat> and oh, pumps. Or pumps. It'll work too. Really, come on, work with me. <laughs> Looks like a pump, feels like a sneaker. <laughs> We didn't give him his medication today. We're so sorry. <laughs> Damn. So that's a Joss question, I guess. Will I do stuff? It's yeah. um, no, you know, obviously. And to you. To me, Dawn, what Dawn was going through is very real, but then people were like, well, you know, she has been com complaining for the entire season. And, uh, you know, I think she'll move from whining to moping. And, uh, and I think we'll begin to see some of the sulking that uh, she hasn't really had a chance to do. Uh, oh. I will tell you this. Um, next season, um, no more will... kill Dawn emails because no, those were well, not fun. you know, Dawn will get to you know grow up like everybody does on the show, and and she's at a particularly uh, delicate place because right now she's uh, the age Buffy was when the show started. So we'll be able to explore a lot more issues in her life and see a lot more colors from her, and including black. Yes, I promised, and um, yes. and we'll get to get into her life somewhat uh, more as well because. Um, the first episode will begin with the reopening, the grand reopening of the Sunnydale High School. So, we will come full circle. Hey, um, and aren't I Screech and I'm, I'm working with Mr. Belding? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know it. <laughs> awesome. No matter what we write for him. Screech. It's weird. Or AC Slater. Whichever one you want to do. You know, I'll be there for you. Uh, Amber Benson, we, we, we haven't really talked, talked about her yet. <laughs> Couldn't she have just been wounded? Um, well, she was, just mortally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we wounded her. We did it. She was wounded in the spine. Um, no, she's dead. Yeah. Uh, it's sad, I hope. Because if people were laughing, we failed big time. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously been quite a controversial issue. But um, it was so hard for us, um, not just because we love uh, that relationship, uh, because uh, we love working with Amber and have for many years, but she knew for a long while what was coming. Uh, it was still really hard on everybody uh, to do it. Um, but I think that probably proves that we were right. And also, uh, in that, and um, my wife and I watched that, and it was really amazing for us, because I've been watching it for six years now, you know, and, uh, and, and I get blown away uh, each year, but when, when she got shot, and Willow got sprayed, and Amber said, there's something on your shirt, no joke, bro, I mean, like, we were bawling, and, and, and not only were you bawling because that person has died, but just the way that it was dealt with was so, oh, you have something on your shirt, and then just, Allie did a fantastic job in that scene, and yes, you can applaud. Um, but with the amazing acting in that scene, and just with how it was orchestrated with the writing, uh, it blew me away, and I've been doing this thing for a while, you know, and, and I'm behind the scenes, so that was fantastic, so good job. You know, one of the things, that, you know, that we had known about this again, like like the Tony thing for you know the whole season, and uh, one of the things that it was nice to say again, this world becoming more literal. Um, you know, when Buffy killed Angel, it was all mystical, and you could buy it back, and it was with a sword and a kiss and a thing, and you know, and they were fighting a bigger than life villain. Well, he was a bigger than life villain, but everything was sort of grand and romantic. Our villains this year were such shimps. Um, and the fact that he used a gun was something that we had talked about from the very beginning as part of this literalism that kind of sucks the life out of the metaphor and is so hard on our growing people. And in fact, in the fourth episode, Buffy has the line, you know, guns, these are never useful. Um, and she says it again in episode 15, and we put that in deliberately because we knew we were going to shoot Tara, not just kill her, but shoot her, because we wanted it to be the most mundane and appalling thing that we could think of and not in any way relate to the grand mysticism and, and intense metaphor of the show. Um, and to make a statement about guns that I think, you know, is always good to be able to make. Yeah, and I think part of the reason why people have responded, uh, have responded so intensely, in addition to the fact that they love seeing, you know, a realistic portrayal of uh, you know, gay characters was was that it was so shocking. But both with the death of Buffy's mother and this, I think both times you didn't pull any punches, and the intention was, you know, there are there, you know, the emotional reality of the show is what we strive for every week. You know, it is a fantasy world that we create and that Joss imagined. But when it comes to things like death of human beings and loved ones and um, and love itself and all the things that we try to say stuff about. Um, it gets very real, and it, it wouldn't have meant as much if it were some strange fantasy thing, you know, or some, if she'd been decapitated by a demon or something. Or if it was somebody that we'd seen for three episodes, if it wasn't yeah. somebody we loved as much. This was so real and, and so painful, I know, for uh, for me personally, not only as, as Don, but for myself, because I loved Amber, and, uh, you know, we all just... She's uh, not really still dead. Do. <laughs> I'm so confused, it's the blonde highlights in my hair. Um, but it's just, the thing is... James is very offended by that. <laughs> Think how dumb he is, wow. It's highlights. Um, James in trouble. You know? It's natural, what? You look like in sync tonight, do you like that? Right, I will man. not bleach my hair in the off season. <laughs> I, I just think, um, going to the whole, you know, I was thinking about the dawn and, and development thing. Amber's, uh, Tara's death 
was just so monumental for each of our characters. Um, for Allison, of course, it was, it was the big turn of, of the season and, you know, the saving the world and, and the whole thing. Um, I think it was just something as painful as it was, it really had to happen because it kind of made us all um, look at ourselves and our, as our characters and kind of even though you guys are, are all, all adults and everything, we all had to grow up and all had to deal with it. And it almost made us more um, together, but, but separate because of our whole, uh, you know, spins. And it was just one of the most touching and, and painful moments. It was amazing. That blood was so hard <laughs> to get on my shirt. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Ray can tell you. We had to, first of all, there was only two shirts. Mm -hmm. So... Like trying to get the blood to splatter in a way, and then it kept hitting my face. And then, you know, they'd have to go wash the shirt. Poor wardrobe ladies, they were just gonna. We went die. through it about 16 times. We did it with like straws, and we spit yeah. on, and we threw it. And, and, and then we'd be like, okay, Ellie, now cry. <laughs> and the shirt is soaking wet, pretty much, because yeah. we didn't have time to like dry it. And it was a nightmare. So I'm so glad that moment came, because at the, at the point that the blood actually hit, and you know, the, the, it was just, I didn't even know if I had done anything because it was just like, was that blood good? Okay, good. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just... So it, those were real tears. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a cut. <laughs> but, uh, a that cut. look of shock was actually, are we done yet? <laughs> yeah. So 14 God, no more takes, please. <laughs> it was awful, but great moment. She was <laughs> very shaken up, too, by the whole... <laughs> <laughs> giving you the behind the scenes. That's right. It's a nightmare. <laughs> right, Ray? That was, it was a tough one that day, I remember, but uh, you really pulled it off. And I remember in the color timing of this episode, when the scene played and the way it was cut, like Nick says and all, I had to cry too. Aww. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> but Ray Nick's himself a lot shaded. And I so never cry. It kind of goes back into his <laughs> personal life. Ray, uh, what are some of the, the special challenges that you face with Buffy? I mean, because it has this really unique look. I mean, you're flipping around. You pretty much know when you've landed on Buffy. I, I mean... Well, I think just getting it done in, in you know, <laughs> in 12 hours a day because yeah. this guy, Gareth Davies, he used to be around. <laughs> he has these... We got rid of him, didn't he we? He has these implements of destruction on his wall <laughs> from the medieval periods, and I'm always afraid he's going to come down with one. <laughs> but, uh, no... Uh, it's, you know, Buffy's very, you know, it, it's a tough show to do, you know, it's, it's, uh, so we just uh, get out there and, and do it as much as, you know, do it as fast as we can, read the script, we make some notes and, uh, and go from there and, and, you know, try to, try to mix up the scenes and, and through the context of, of the script, um, try to get a good look. Uh, Joss comes around and, and gives us his, uh, his uh, points of view and what, tells us what he'd like to see and, we try and make it happen. The thing about, I mean, I think the thing that's fun about it is, uh, you know, the thing that makes it so difficult, which is why, you know, I, I respect these actors more than any I've ever known because, you know, they have to do everything, you know, at the drop of a hat, comedy, horror, action. The same goes for um, every aspect of the show. We're constantly asking, you know, Carrie for a space that's small enough that and for Ray to light it dark enough that it could be horror and it's trapped and you're cramped and then we want a giant kung fu fight in there too so you have to sort of you know we really you know mixing the genres works visually and literally in terms of sets and costumes and all of that stuff and since we're constantly ping ponging back and forth the whole point of the show is for you never to know which kind of scene you're in um, you know it's it doesn't become that hey here's a comedy scene you know Put all the light in front, make it really bright. You know, you have to be true to the to the reality of the thing while still, you know, having it bright enough so that the jokes don't feel they do land yet dark enough that the horror lands and the the space and the light are very, very specific and very difficult to create and the amount of time that these guys have to do it and the amount of money that they have to to build things is not so large. Well, and um and I think you realize this. And uh, you know, Every week, um, I think the show looks beautiful. I think I think it has from the start, and I think these guys carry that on extraordinarily. I love you, man. It's, uh... One of the great things I notice about Ray's lighting is you can always tell where the light is coming from and from what, whether it's mm -hmm. sunshine coming in from windows, whether it's firelight, whatever it is, what time of day it is is always very clear with the lighting. Mm -hmm. And that 
is easy to do if you're, will, if you're willing to uh, uh, let the actors suffer, half of them in half light, right? So, you, I mean, you can either light the heck out of the set, in which case all the actors are happy because we have a huge amount of light and we all look rested, we look great, or you can light it really interestingly and with the, uh, with the, the source light coming from a, a place that's, that you can tell, but the actors don't look as quite as good, and Ray balances that really well. Well, you know, we... Yeah. We didn't exactly hire trolls. <laughs> <laughs> you realize you can all act, man. but there's, you know, there's also another reason you're TV stars. And Ray also has to, fact, uh, has to fight that there's a lot of girls on the show, and we like our little hairs like this. Yeah, so we've yeah, got yeah. this Thanks, much man. space to get light into. <laughs> it's like, could you maybe um, push the hair? What? <laughs> That's the style. I can't. My contouring. What? <laughs> The eyeshadow effect. Yeah, you can't right. handcuff them. They uh, they need some room there to act, and they do a great job. And they're and they're all pretty easy to light because uh, <laughs> they take it very well. And uh, I'm I'm pretty lucky when when He's it comes so to nice. that. He's so nice. But I mean, I mean, seriously, you can see that we spend more time than other shows. I mean, the crew calls the show around town. It's called Buffy the Weekend Killer <laughs> because we don't get. But because we're all straining towards something better, we know that we can if we just put a little extra effort into it. And that's, it doesn't really play so much for the actors who don't have to be there the whole time, but the crew. And I'll say exactly, yeah, speaking, I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we can just, like, if you guys just applaud, because those guys 12 hour day is the like, Five days a week, 15 hour days. I mean, we have our time, but those guys make it happen. There's like most TV shows, if you work a 12 hour day, that's the max. That's like, we worked a 12 hour day last month, it's a big deal. If we work less than, or if the crew works less than 12 hours a day, that's a special thing on Buffy. I know it's hard work, but it's fun because we all love what we do. We, we come there, you know. We can just tell because Ray's so nice, is because he wants to be there every day. And, and our writers like writing for us because we love speaking their words. And um, we work hard for you guys. Well, so Ray, thank really. you for, for coming out here to begin with and, and for watching. Us. You've assembled a group of people that, that really uh, kind of care about each other, frankly. The crew. Well, I mean, you know. It's, we've been together like six years. When we started talking, it seems like years ago, um, you know, I was talking about the, uh, um, how the musical started. And it just, everything, you know, it came from that, that episode we were doing, which we were so excited when we were working on it. And it was so much fun to make. And um, it led to so much more. And it really does, it really does come from these people on both sides of me. You know, Kerry is working on Firefly, but he's also working on, on Buffy. And yeah, a lot of the people from Buffy and Angel went to Firefly because, you know, they had been on the shows for a long time and they wanted to move on. And to be able to have that rather than just doing something completely different, just increasing the family and keeping it within the circle because the circle really exists between what we get back from you, what we give to each other, what we get from Ray. Uh, everything Allison said, um, since I don't get lit, I think I can say this uh, without being accused of, of looking for the light, is true. You know, it's uh, the energy that's on a set, a lot of it comes from the DP and that's really, really important. And I, I think the, the energy on set um, is really good. You know, I've been on the other kind of show. And, um, and, it, it, uh, and it feeds us, it does. I, my love for these guys, um, you know, makes me want to work harder for them. And, and that applies to every single crew member. And, and you can tell, when we did the musical, you can tell when the dolly grip is really excited about a camera move because he understands it's part of the story. You know, he doesn't like, he's not punching a clock, he's telling a story. And I think every single person, the sound guy, every single person on the set has a chance to feel that because the actors feel it, because the people who are, you know, setting the tone like Ray and Marty feel it because everybody in every department is going to be pushed as hard as they can to work as well as they can and going to be appreciated for it because if they didn't do it, I couldn't do it. None of us could, and the thing would collapse. So you're trying everybody to save loves your ass everybody. with Wayne, aren't you? What? You really are. <laughs> he was. You were. You were so specific. I remember that. Wayne is the dolly. Is the is the yeah. dolly grip. He and he's fabulous. But you were making him like clear the pole on the third beat of the second measure. You yeah. know. I mean that's. <laughs> No. And he, he was grumbling, but at the same time, when he got it right, he was like, come on, like, I got it, I got it, mate, it's great. <laughs> Does he grumble? I mean, I, I feel we, grumble. none of us, yeah, ever have to worry, because not only are we surrounded by a great crew, and a truly great, you know, DP, we just, um, we would, we're told when we suck. You know, <laughs> we can do an awful take, and, and Joss come up and be like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, w- no. yeah, I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> yeah. He's like, let's, let's try it this way. Um, and he never tells us we're wrong, but you know, I know that they're, the take that's going to be printed is not going to be awful because there's just a whole trust thing. Um, with the body, we did about 25 takes of, is she dead? Is she dead? You know, with, with mom lying on the ground. And, and it was the last take, and every time it was just, oh, just a little bit here and just a little bit there. And, and I was so freaked out because, you know, that's so much pressure. But in the end, I mean, the take that was picked, I, it's, it's all about trust. It's great. I also, being somewhat, I'm being very facetious when I say we feel cheated on because I don't think, you know, by other shows, because I don't believe that you would, Josh would never go do something else unless he felt like it was time in a way and that the show had had a, enough of a feeling of community and family and a sense of a staff of writers who have developed. I mean, we have incredible writers. A- every person on our staff could run their own show, um, could write and run their That's own show. Idea. Well, yes, come on, guys. I wasn't going to mention it. Um, <laughs> and um, and I, I think that, that one thing I can say about, about you among many things, and I feel like we're sort of falling into the aren't we incredible show, <laughs> but um, it, is the tr- it's really truly true that Joss would never leave to do another show unless he felt like Buffy would be as good as ever, and he will work as hard as he can to make sure that that is true. I mean, um, I have no doubt that we're going to be just fine, and that he's going to you know, give himself to everything as much, because it, somehow it seems like he's just got this scary uh, alien ability to just do more. It makes him do more. <laughs> the thing about Joss Compared. is that he knows if you, uh, he knows where each character will be in like 20 years. He's he's that specific. <laughs> when when we were doing the musical episode, um, we were trying to figure out all the color schemes and how everything was going to work, like in the bronze with the dance and everything. And I forgot what I said, but I made a comment, and Joss was like, "Oh, honey, I will pick the color of your socks. That's how specific I will be." So uh, he's he's a perfectionist, but it makes us work harder, and we're really. Damn proud of it. Um, yeah. For God's sake, somebody ask a question. I know. <laughs> um, you know. You know what? I, it's 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 the end. That's a good question. <laughs> no, that's, so it's not really a question, but it's. Uh, well, I guess we could. No, but, well, but we all have actually question booths outside. Five dollars yes, a question. That's right. <laughs> I'm on Lancashire. <laughs> Allie's on Riverside. That's right. Um, well, let me let me let me just ask you this though. So, um, <laughs> Uh, Find her. Is there anything that you can tell us about next season? Yeah. Is there just like one thing that you can well, say? Well, I did. Weren't you listening to the whole high school thing? Um, oh, I can tell right. you this. That, that, um, it's huge. It's, huge. Uh, it's a large if thing. I had said that, I'd be dead next season. <laughs> He's going to bring the high school back. Oh, dear. <laughs> did you just forget I said that? Ray, get the old it's, lady filter. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> get the Channing. Is, is the Double Meat Palace coming back? Um, no. Actually, uh, interestingly enough, the Double Meat Palace is this, you know, in, in, in the episode with the most sex um, and the most controversy we've ever had, the Double Meat Palace was the only thing we ever did that made advertisers pull out. Um, they um, uh, did not like us making fun of fast food. <laughs> Uh, they felt that that was a terrible idea, and wouldn't it be nice if we stopped? Um, so that's the most controversial thing we ever, have ever ended up is doing, was right? the Double Meat Palace. Oh, that's so funny. Um, uh, you know, uh, Sarah is very upset about not getting to wear the hat anymore, but um, <laughs> that's a pain she's going to take. She's going to use that pain uh, in her acting. She loved that. Um, you know, what I can say about next year is, um, you know, the reopening Heels. of the high school is... <laughs> Oh, I think I, she said keels, not no, heels. Heels. I know. Come on. Is is where we're starting, and it's it it represents a lot of what we're talking about in terms of getting back to the very first uh, mission statement of the show. We've explored the very dark side of power, and although next year will contain much horror and anguish as it always does, um, next year is really about. Um, the original statement of the show, which is the joy of female power, of having it, using it, sharing it. Woo-hoo. And Willow dies. And what? You die. <laughs> All right, then. Great. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming. I hope you had as Thank good you. time as Thank I did. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So Thank you guys. You're awesome. Thank you.